Hello friends, hope you are going through the copyright related PPTs and the information which you are trying to uh, get from the internet as well as other sources. Uh, in our today's session, we will go through another important topic related to copyright and that is infringement of copyright. Now I hope by now you are well aware of the word uh, infringement and what does it mean. But to just reiterate and to uh, give you more idea about this word, infringement typically means doing a certain activity uh, for which you don't have a right. Meaning in case of IPR, if a owner that is the first owner has got an exclusive right to do certain activities and if you go on performing those activities without the permission and authority and consent from the owner of that uh, IPR in this case copyright it will be termed as infringement simply put you are doing something which you are not legally authorized to do it becomes infringement. Uh, till now which we have studied topics you must have understood that like in patents in copyright as well the copyright owner gets certain rights which are exclusive rights uh, for his lifetime and plus 60 years after his death uh, to sell certain copyrightable work to make use of it to make the adaptation of the work to publish the work to broadcast uh, to sell the work. So meaning what that when a person uses his intellect to do certain things he should be getting benefit in return for his uh, uh, efforts which he has put in. In case of copyright as well when a person goes on developing certain work creating certain work or making certain works he does it with an expectation to get certain monetary benefits out of it. However, if without his permission, somebody else takes the advantage of his work, uses the work without his permission and tries to get any benefit out of it, it will be considered to be copyright infringement. The Indian Copyright Act 1957 has provided certain reliefs uh, which are guaranteed to the copyright owner in case of infringement. So in our next uh, today's session and our next session we will be going through the infringement topic and what are the reliefs which are available to the person whose copyright has been infringed. But for our sake for today's session let us quickly go through what exactly is copyright infringement. So when a sole owner, when the own, an owner has the sole authority to use his work and if any third party uses his work without the permission or reproduces it or makes duplicate out of it or copy pastes it in our today's language if we call it, then it will lead to copyright infringement for which the owner has got a right to take action. Uh, now, to uh, bring it under the sphere of the Copyright Act 1957, it is not necessary that it must be registered. Indian Copyright Act, like we have already said before, does not make it mandatory to get your copyrightable work registered. Even if you have not registered your copyrightable work, but the minute the work gets created, you get a copyright over it by default. And under the Indian Copyright Act, even if you have not registered your work, if somebody else copies your work, you can go to the courts and seek the reliefs and the remedies which are available under the Indian Copyright Act. So registration is not mandatory but it is recommended because you get an upper hand uh, with respect to proving that this work is yours. It is your original work because when you talk about copyright infringement it is necessary to prove certain things. The first one being that it is your ownership over that work and the minute you get the work registered it is a prima facie evidence that means you have got the certificate of registration means it is your original work. However, if you have not registered your work, it does not mean that you cannot approach the court. You can still go and file the case against the infringer. But in such case, you will have to prove it to the court that you are the owner of that copyrighted uh, work. You are the original author of that work and somebody else has stolen it from you or used it without your permission. Likewise, the work which has been infringed, there should be a substantial similarity between the original work and between the infringed copy. 
लाइक वी सेड इन केस ऑफ कॉपी राइट नॉवेल्टी इज समथिंग विच इज़ नॉट रिक्वायर्ड लाइक इट वॉज रिक्वायर्ड इन केस ऑफ पेटेंट देर कैन बी अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट टू पीपल हैव क्रिएटेड सेम टू सेम वर्क विदाउट स्टीलिंग इट फ्रॉम एनी बडी एल्स विदाउट स्टीलिंग फ्रॉम ईच अदर विदाउट कॉपिंग ईच अदर सो देर माइड बी अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट टू पीपल हैव गॉट सेम क्रिएटिवनेस और सेम इंटेलेक्ट एंड हैव क्रिएटेड द वर्क विच इज़ वेरी मच सिमिलर टू ईच अदर बट द फैक्ट दैट इट इज़ सिमिलर टू अदर अदर पर्सनस वर्क डज नॉट मीन दैट इट हैज़ बीन इन्फ्रिंज the only thing where you call it to be infringed is that it should have been taken from the owner of the copyright table work and it would have been put it into use so if i have drawn let's say if i have created a beautiful flower vase at my home using my intellect and my skills and a person somewhere in let's say us has created a same flower vase uh, using his intellect and skill that person does not even know that i have created a same flower vase it will not be considered to be copyright infringement because that person has not copied it from me has not taken my idea has not uh, seen the picture of my vase and has done it using that person's creativity so it will not be considered to be copyright infringement however if i have created a drawing of a flower vase and i have posted it on my facebook account somebody takes it from my facebook account draws it as it is without making any changes to it and starts publishing it in any newspapers journals without taking my uh, prior consent and without giving me any credit for it meaning instead of writing my name as the painter of that drawing that person infringer writes his name but that copy has been stolen from me it has been stolen from my facebook account and without my permission the person is trying to make a commercial utilization of that drawing in this case it will be considered to be infringement so i hope you have understood the difference between this so there might be a situation that two people might have created same or similar work but without taking it from each other however when it has been taken from the original author or owner without the permission and it has been used for some commercial benefit then it will be considered to be infringement and the third requirement is that the copying amounts to improper appropriation the word appropriation here means to apply that work for getting a benefit in return so like i said if i have sold it somewhere then it will be considered to be inappropriate appropriation in proper appropriation because i am getting monetary benefit out of it without the permission of the copyright owner whereas if i have if somebody has for example let's say uh, now these ppts which i have created these have been created not for some commercial utilization but it has been created for some educational work let's say somebody showcases these ppts in their lectures by giving me credit for these ppts meaning when let's say one of you student is taking a print out of this ppt and sharing it amongst friends for only and only for educational purposes then it will be considered to be not infringement however if somebody from you takes the print out of this ppt or downloads this ppt and starts posting it on various social media websites like slide share or ip spicy ip and does not write my name as the original author of this ppt but you write your own name and start publishing these ppts as it is it will be considered to be improper appropriation so it is not that only use of the original copyrightable work is infringement but why and how the work has been used is will also be considered to determine whether there has been infringement of copyright or not when you talk about uh, copyright infringement not every action of copying will be considered to be copyright infringement uh, whereas there are certain remedies which are given under the indian copyright act 1957 if a person uh, infringes the copyright of another person and it has been proven in the court then the court may award any of the following remedies 
Now the remedies under the Copyright Act have been divided into two parts. One is civil remedy and another is criminal remedy. Now I hope everybody here knows what is civil and what is criminal. But for those who don't know, let me just reiterate. In simple terms, for non-law students, in simple terms, Criminal action means when you are putting a person behind bars, when you are imprisoning the person, meaning you are putting a person in jail for certain activities which are considered to be very serious crimes, which are considered to be grave crimes, which are considered to be some sort of infringement against the society, wherein it is not only the money which is getting affected, it is not only certain monetary infringement, but the infringement is at a higher level which is going to affect the entire society. Such offences are considered to be criminal offences. For example, murder, kidnapping, these are considered to be criminal offences because here you are dealing with a person or a property of person and it is considered to be grave, it is considered to be a serious offence. But certain offences are considered to be civil offences which may not be against any person's life or any person's property but it might be against a certain monetary assignments. Now to give you a small example, uh, if uh, there is any particular money which I am supposed to give to another person under a contract and I do not give that money, I do not return that loan amount to the creditor then it will be considered to be an offence. But this offence is not considered to be a criminal offence. It will be considered to be a civil offence. Under Copyright Act as well, the certain acts will be considered to be civil actions, whereas certain acts will be considered to be criminal, depending upon what infringement has been taken place. Likewise, certain remedies will be considered to be civil remedies. That means they do not uh, give any punishment to a person to bring him uh, or to send him in jail. But there will be certain monetary or non-monetary remedies. Whereas certain remedies will be criminal remedies. That means a person will be asked to give fine and will also be sent behind bars. Means will be sent to jail. So let us quickly go through to understand what are these remedies under the Indian Copyright Act. Now the civil remedies are provided under section 55 as follows. The first one is the interlocutory injunction. Now the word injunction we have already studied it under patent. That means it is a stay order means the court gives the infringer an order to stop continuing with the infringing work. Meaning, the person will have to not perform any further activity related to that copyrightable material. So, these orders prevent the infringer from doing anything that will amount to copyright infringement. Now, to give you a small example, let's say, if I have uh, written any beautiful poem and I had kept it in one particular drawer of my house. A friend comes to my house and takes that poem from the drawer and starts publishing it in some newspaper or journal. The minute I understand about it, I come to know about it, I go to the court and I ask the court to give order to my friend to stop doing these activities, infringing activity. The minute the court is convinced with my case, the court will pass an injunction against my friend wherein now my friend will have to stop publishing that work anywhere, be it in newspaper, be it in journal or even use that poem of mine for any commercial benefit. This order which is passed by the court which will stop my friend from using my work for any benefit, it will be considered to be injunction. Another civil remedy which is provided under the Copyright Act is that of financial remedy. Financial remedy generally means uh, the commercial loss which the person has suffered because the infringer has infringed the copyright. You need to give certain monetary reliefs to relief to the copyright owner. So in these case, whatever damages has been suffered, it will be paid. In certain exceptional cases, if there is any profit loss, 
that means if there is any loss of profit just because other person has used my material original material and infringed it i have suffered monetary loss then it will be also considered to be giving of financial relief uh, another example which i can give is that we all know about the pirated copies of various bollywood movies which we see or uh, be it in the uh, form of cd or be it on any websites the songs and everything the movies the songs can only be broadcasted by the producer of that movie that is something which we have already seen however if somebody illegally downloads that movie and starts publishing it on any website it is considered to be infringement of copyright because of which nobody wants to buy the original copy by paying an amount of money which might be very high if i am getting a bollywood movie latest bollywood movie free of cost by downloading it from some pirated website why would i go to the store or why would i go to the theater and watch that movie after paying 300 or 400 rupees in this case the original owner that means in the the case of bollywood movies the producer suffers lot of monetary losses because of such infringement he can ask the court to grant him monetary relief that means whatever profit has been lost because of this infringement with the person who has circulated the movie on the so websites he may ask the court to grant him monetary relief from the infringer such type of relief is known as financial relief another important order which is known as anton pillar order it is very common nowadays in copyright or any other ipr related work now the word anton pillar basically started in england uh, this order name has come uh, from a case which uh, was lodged in uk courts by a german company so this german company by the name anton pillar sg had filed a case in uk courts uh, because the drawings which were sent by this german company to their uh, uk agents this uk agent without the permission of german company started giving these drawings of the machines uh, to the german company's competitors so the drawings of the machines which were sent by the german company to the uk agents these were the copyrighted material of the german company without their permission the uk agents started giving these co copies to the competitors of the german company and thereby the court had passed an order against this uk agents wherein these drawings which were in the custody of the uk agents they were told to be destroyed they were told to be confiscated and destroyed so that the uk agents will not get access to these drawings and from there the anton pillar order became very famous not only in uk but throughout the world in india as well uh, may the courts have been following this anton pillar order wherein it restrains the infringer from dealing in the infringing copies and by destroying them as well according to this order uh, the german company's representatives were also given authority to enter into the premises of these uk agents and take the custody of these drawings so the anton pillar order which is nowadays followed in india as well uh, demands that if the anton pillar order is passed against the infringer the rightful owner of the copyright can enter the premises of the infringer take custody of these uh, copy writable work and either destroy it or even go on uh, taking con confiscate or take custody of these uh, copyrightable material according to this order the infringer is also required to disclose the names of all the suppliers and customers of these infringing goods so tomorrow if let's say for example uh, a copyrightable work in movie bollywood songs it has been uh, pirated and it has been sold on streets if the court uh, take action against this infringer then the infringer will also be required to give the details of all the suppliers and all the customers who have been either supplying them this in pirated copies or they have been using these pirated copies this is the importance of anton pillar order 
लाइक एंटन पिलर ऑर्डर अनादर टाइप ऑफ ऑर्डर विच ओरिजिनेटेड इन यू के इट सेल्फ इज नोन एज द मरेवा इंजंक्शन अगेन दिस मरेवा इंजंक्शन विच वॉज गिवन इन समवेयर इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी वन और नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव दिस केम फ्रॉम अनादर केस विच इज़ द मनेरवा कंपनिया केस वेर इन again an injunction was passed against the infringer to take the custody of temporary custody of the infringing goods and this injunction was passed ex parte ex parte means without even listening to the other side if their demand if the case demands that intensity if it requires that seriousness and it requires that urgency of passing an injunction even before listening to the other party then the mareva injunction is generally passed because in other types of reliefs you have to uh, the court will have to take into consideration both the parties uh, case and then pass a judgment but if the court feels that uh, the other party firstly either is not appearing in the court or the other party may dispose of that infringing copy before even the court passes the orders for it then the mareva injunction is passed wherein the other party uh, ex parte will give uh, will be given an order to not destroy the infringing goods and the custody of these infringing goods will be taken up by the court so in case of civil remedies financial relief is one part but before even going to the court and getting the financial relief if the uh, owner of the copyrightable work feels that if the uh, infringer will go on utilizing my copyrighted work till the time court passes an order these are the various types of injunctions which can be passed by the court if it is required in case of criminal remedies that means uh, if the offenses are very grave then in that case uh, imprisonment up to 3 years can be passed by the court but not less than 6 months likewise fine which may not be less than 50000 rupees but which may extend to 2 lakh rupees a search and seizure order of the infringing goods will also be passed by the courts and likewise the infringing goods will have to be delivered to the copyright owner uh, the copyright act 1957 has also granted uh, the power to the police to seize the infringing copies even before getting any warrant from the magistrate so when you talk about the reliefs these are the three major types of reliefs in our next session we will go through uh, certain exceptions to the infringement of copyright thank you so much